chapter 28, and I will begin reading at verse 1. You that have your Bible will find these words recorded. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness, but they built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out of the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from the hand, they said to each other, this man must, have, must be a murderer. For though he escaped the sea, the goddess Jester has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up and suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time, seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their mind and said, he was God. I want to use for a thought today. Shake it off. Amen. Shake it off. Many of us are going to encounter some things in life that are going to be deadly. That are going to have a lasting effect on your life. But in spite of the fact that you're going to encounter some things, always know that you can shake it off. Most of us who are here today will never encounter a venomous snake bite. As a matter of fact, only one out of 35,500 people in America will ever encounter a venomous snake bite. But there's another snake that you might want to look out for. Amen. And that's some of them bad habits some of, some of us have. Amen. I'm not going to put it all on just you today. <laughs> that's the snake. And that's the old serpent that you better watch out for. You have to learn how to break bad habits. And Jesus is a chain breaker. Yes. And the more of God you get, the less of the devil you'll have. Amen. We need to always be rooted and grounded Amen. and settled Amen. in love in Christ. We should always be trying to get rid of those things that does so easily beset us. And the Bible tells us even to do such. It tells us, lay aside every weight in sin that does so easily beset us. Lay it aside. How do I do that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says we are sanctified through the truth. And thy word is truth. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 that Hearing God's word is the washing of water by the word. The word cleanses you. That's how you get clean. That's how you get clean. Yes. Then Psalms 119, the Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? You want to get clean? Start listening to the word. Start hearing the word. Read it. It'll make you wise. Practice right. it. It'll make you holy. It'll be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. So what do we need to do today, church? We need to shake it off. We need to shake it off. Shake off what? Bitterness. Don't look at your neighbor. Look at me. Wrath. Anger. Clamor. Evil speaking. Oops. Malice. We need to get rid of that stuff. You want to really get deep. Amen. Pull that man out of the club. I'm just having fun. <laughs> uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy. Get rid of all that stuff. 
You know, the Bible goes so far to say, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you ain't, if you're continuing in this practice, you ain't doing no more fooling yourself. Fooling yourself. The Bible tells us to lay aside these deeds, these deeds of darkness. Let us therefore cast off or lay aside the works of darkness. You got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. That serpent that latched on to Paul, Paul shook him off. He shook him off. He shook him off. And we as believers, we have to learn how to put off some things too. Put off some things. It's that old man that likes to keep those things going. It's the old man. And the Bible says, uh, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. We got a nature that we inherited from Adam. And it is a damage. That nature we inherited from Adam is sinful. It, it don't want to obey Christ. It don't want you to live right. That's the old nature. But the new nature that we inherited through Jesus Christ by salvation, it's, it, 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 it brings in us true righteousness and holiness. One writer said it best. Two natures beat within my breast. One I love, one I hate, the one I feed will dominate. You got two natures. You got that old nature. And 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 and, and you know, hey, how many of you all know when you don't need to be in certain places around certain people? I was single for a long time. Everybody else was single for a long time. Everybody didn't get married until they turned 18. I, I ain't messing with nobody. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I did live holy. I did live holy. All those years I was single, I lived holy. Amen. But I but I had a struggle on my hand. I had to fight this flesh. I had to fight it with fasting, praying, staying in church, turning my head. Some things just ain't good to see. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't feel like I'm going on. One might have said it this way. I will put no wicked thing before my eyes. See, some of y'all got that little phone. That phone that got you in a lot of trouble. Don't, don't look at your neighbor. Look at me. Don't look down either. Look, that phone has got you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You can go places. Nobody, you think nobody know about it. But I'm going to tell you something. You might think you're talking to a young guy, but you might be talking to an old man. You just don't know. Yeah, yeah. You don't never know. And he, 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 but he was in my chat group. That's what them trollers are. Amen. They're everywhere. You cannot trust nobody but Jesus. So the Bible tells us, get rid of these things. Put them all. Get rid of them. Watch out for that old dragon, the devil, Satan, as he is called. Amen. In, in Revelation 12 and 9. In Revelation 20 and 2, look out. Watch out for the devil. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. It was the great Chuck Swindoll said these words. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. How do you know that? Most of the things you thought was going to happen never did happen. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. How many of you all... When something happens, you go to the rock of your salvation. Or how do you all go to the bottom? Or get pulled back into some sinful practice that you that you always go back to to satisfy yourself. Oh, I'm preaching good now. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible tells us what we ought to do as believers. When you want God to bring you out, the Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind me. And then you press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what you're called to do. Oh, but so many people want to know, why do we suffer, Pastor? Why do we suffer? You suffer because when you suffer, the glory of God is revealed in us. Yeah, yeah, because nobody can take it like a saint. 
They know how to take a licking. Y'all ain't helping me. And keep right on kicking. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't learned how to live like a saint yet. Amen. When, when, when the Bible says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. How many people have given up? They just stop coming. I ain't going no more. Trying to, amen, play girlfriend and boyfriend with God. You know You know how I knew, you know, I had a girlfriend when I was a little young fella. And I don't want to break up with her, but I didn't want to tell her. So I, I just tried to do everything to just please her. I knew she was going to break up with me. One day she walked in the McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's. And she just brought me my little ring and left it on the counter. And I was saying, yes. That's what I was thinking. But some of you all doing the same thing with God. You just do everything to just please him. Talking to that bull, and you know he ain't saved. I'm preaching good now. Right. Amen. Amen. Slipping in the darkness. Amen. Running around and slipping and sliding and peeping and hiding. And, amen. And, and, and not knowing that. Amen. God's saying, Why are you doing me like that? Don't you know? I said to you, Don't grieve me. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. When I let you suffer, it is so that the glory of God, according to the scriptures, might be revealed in you. They're going to see what a real saint is like. Hallelujah. Suffering is in your identity. Hallelujah. And it says, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. The Bible also goes so far as to say that as Christ has suffered in the flesh, you ought to arm yourself likewise. Jesus suffered. Why is it that you think you don't want to suffer? I remember one of our young girls got saved many years ago. Everybody say many years ago. Many years ago. I don't want you to think I'm talking about one of you all. But she said, why I got to suffer? She said, I had more money when I was in the world. Yeah, look what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. And she said, why well, I got to suffer? Suffering is part of your identity. All that shall live godly for Christ's sake shall, shall suffer. You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer sometimes. But remember these words that the Bible says, better is the end of a matter than the beginning. And just Excuse me. And just like God took the temple and, and, and he made the, the latter temple greater than the one before. Your ladder will be greater than your past if you stay with God. Because he always takes us from glory to glory. Somebody say, every mile goes higher and higher. God is saying to some poor soul today, look, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. I got something for you. I got something for you. Because other people, hey man, they, they try to look down on you. Despise you. When Paul shipwrecked, amen, they probably called him a shipwreck apostle. Amen. People are going to always, amen, amen, dwell on the negative. Yes. And the Bible declares that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. But do you not know that it rains on the just as well as the unjust? The only thing is, they go to hell and we go to heaven. When it rains, the rain don't discriminate. If it's raining outside, amen, try it. Pray don't discriminate. And God says, everybody's going to have some trouble. By matter of fact, the Bible says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. You're going to have some trouble. Amen. It's how you respond to that trouble. Amen. Ask your neighbor, how you doing? How you doing? Amen. It's how you respond to that trouble. Because the Lord said these words to this. He said, in this world, or in this life, you shall have tribulation. Oh, you're going to have some trials. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have it. That's part of life. 
But the Bible says that the trials of your faith are more precious than gold. What you're going through, there's a reason for it. And, and I'm going to bless you when you go through it. Matter of fact, the Bible says, after you have suffered a while, then I will settle you and establish you and make you perfect. But you got to go through. In the words of Theodore Roosevelt, he said these words. It's not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of good deeds could have done better. The credit actually belonged to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. Oh, to somebody today, I want you to know, Paul testified that everything that happened to me, it happened to me for the furtherance of the gospel. God wanted to take this thing further. That's why he allowed you to have the childhood you did. So you can testify to others. Nobody can tell it like you tell it. You know, I, I listened to one of my daughters. She, she grew up with asthma and um, had a hard time as a child. But who, who knew God would take all that asthma to give her one of the most melodious voices in the world? Amen. Amen. Sometimes I, I used to hear her sing, I said, good gracious of life. Could all that come out of somebody infested with asthma? <laughs> Praise the name of God. Your God, he pays double for all your trouble. Amen. You are so blessed to be who you are and where you are. Do you know what the Bible says? And you got to know it. I know it. But the Bible says, and we know all things. Somebody say something. All things. Uh -uh. All things. Whatever happened to me, it's got to work out for my good. It's got to. According to the master's plan. If he doesn't let something happen, that wasn't for me. All things work together for the good of those who tell somebody you got to love him. There's a lot of people who want that all things, but they don't love him. Huh? It ain't going to work out for you if you don't love me. And he said, if you love me, you'll keep my command. Yeah, if you love me. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. He said, well, feed my sheep. Amen. Peter, do you love me? Feed my lamb. He asked him a third time. I wonder why he kept asking Peter. Peter got mad. You know. <laughs> I said, Lord, you, see, that's why I asked you three times. Right. But Peter showed that he really did love him. He showed, he also showed that he had challenges. Amen. Because Peter said, Lord, others may deny you, but I never deny you. Mm -hmm. And then soon as Jesus was taken, now Peter proved strong for a moment. He took his knife and cut off the servant's ear, his sword, and cut off the servant's ear. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus put the servant's ear back on. He healed him right there at that very moment. You know why he healed that servant? Because Peter wasn't going to be able to preach 50 days later on the day of Pentecost if that man was standing out there with that ear missing. He <laughs> cut off a Roman soldier's ear, and now you stand there preaching? I know they're going to get you. But Jesus put the ear of that soldier back on. And Peter denied the Lord three times. And then he told his disciples, I go a fishing. I'm tired of this. This is too much. Let's go back to what we used to do. The Lord said, no, I call you. No longer shall you catch fish, but now you're supposed to catch men. And yet Peter went back to fishing. We have this tendency of going back to stuff that, 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 um, that's morally depraved. Y'all ain't helping me. You, you, I just need a few others to shake their head. Yes, they know what I'm talking about. Huh? 
See, some some of y'all go back to that bottle. Some of y'all go back to that man. Some of y'all get on that internet so you can get in on. Y'all ain't helping me. Come on, Bishop. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you, are you start by smoking or drinking or whatever? Anything. Go back to that morally depraved state, just like Peter did. But you know what God is? He's a God of a second chance. He made sure he ministered to Peter. And on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus died, guess who stood up to preach the message? And he said, repent, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. Peter preached. The same one that denied him. The same one that cut off the ear. The same one that took the men back fishing rather than catching souls for Christ. God can use those things. But your job is to shake it off. Shake off all those inconsistencies about you. Shake off all those shortcomings, those bad habits. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Would you stand today in the presence of God?